Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Right now I'm going to do a video on how to start a YouTube channel. So this is a question I get asked a lot and I want to help you guys grow. This is how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys, I'll show you guys, I'm going to tell you guys my tips on how to start your own YouTube channel. Being a realtor in 2020 and beyond, I feel like having a YouTube channel is gonna give you a big up on the competition. Not really competition, because we don't need to get there, but it's gonna help you to stand out from other realtors. So if you're watching this video, it's because you already have that idea you already have it in your mind that you want to start a YouTube channel. If you have that thought process already, you need to start it. You don't get anywhere by doing nothing. You just got to start. It never starts off amazing. It always starts off awkward or not the best editing or not the best lighting or not the best sound quality. You got to start somewhere, but you got to start somewhere to be able to build yourself up to something better. So even if it's not real estate, whatever you have in mind that you want your topic to be for your channel, do it. If it's in your gut and you have a good feeling about it and it's something you think you can expand on for a long time, do it. It doesn't mean that you're going to be talking about the same thing for the rest of your life <laughs> on your YouTube channel. It just means this is at least where you're going to start or this is what you're going to this is what your channel is going to be about for now. A good example is myself. I started off my YouTube channel with all my videos being tailored towards the students in the Humber program, giving tips, um, giving my experience, giving a heads up on things to look out for or technical issues to avoid just helping people get through the real estate program. Then as I'm getting licensed, I'm like, you know what, this will be a good thing to continue. Now doing more videos on getting licensed and starting off as a new realtor. As I become more experienced, I'll do more videos on being a realtor and doing this and doing that. Maybe later on, I'll uh, become, maybe I'll go back to school and get my brokerage license. Maybe I'll one day run my own brokerage company. Probably not, but the sky's the limit. Um, so that's kind of an example of an evolution of a channel or what's another topic? I don't know, it doesn't matter. But my point is whatever you start off your channel, it doesn't mean you have to stick to that. You can move it into something else. You just have to make sure you have a good transition. So I have five steps, five steps to starting a successful YouTube channel. Step number one is research. Especially as, more specifically as a realtor, research is gonna be a daily routine for you. So the same with researching CMAs or different houses for clients, you need to research different information and tactics for your YouTube channel to reach out to those different clients. You're gonna to wanna to look up different equipment that you can use. You can be creative, how to use your phone to film YouTube, how to, I don't know, use, if you have a computer with a webcam, as long as you can see yourself clearly, you can use that. Um, whether you want to get a selfie stick or a ring light, or you want someone to be holding the camera, maybe you don't want to be sitting down. Maybe you want to have a more dynamics moving around and things like that. You just want to do some research. You want to do research on how you're going to film your videos. Maybe what kind of time length you want to go. If you want to do longer videos with a lot of information or shorter videos with just quick clips, giving out quick information. You want to look at what your title is going to be like. You can actually research good titles for YouTube videos, how to reach the right demographics, how to reach the right audience. Um, some things are making your titles all capital because it'll stand out from other videos and grab more people's attention. Some people just find that annoying and won't click on your video. So you won't win them all, but you can find out what um, is gonna work best for you and your channel. You're gonna wanna research um, 
what you're gonna put in the description box. If you're gonna have the same template for all the videos or if you're gonna have something customized and change it up, you're gonna wanna know how to use tags on YouTube. Um, that's very important. The SEOs, search engine optimization, and what that means, how it works, how you can use it and implement it. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna know what your target audience is and how you will reach them. All of these are different topics that I've either searched on Google or searched on YouTube. So I can do it, you can do it. Number two is plan, plan ahead. So you just basically wanna make your game plan. What you wanna write down, what I did is, first of all, I watched this lovely lady, Erin On Demand, amazing, amazing startup tips. I binge watched all of her videos at the beginning of the year and that's really what helped motivate me to actually just go out and start my channel. But you wanna have kind of a master list of video topics that you want to cover that are related to your niche or your target, um, whatever topic you're doing. So you wanna make a list. I made a list of YouTube titles um, that I wanted to do. When I first started, the list was at 65 videos. I can tell you of those 65, I have done, I don't know, I, I probably have about 20 videos on my YouTube channel right now. And from that original list, about seven of them I've actually done. So you're not gonna get to all of them. Some of them I said, you know what, I don't even need to cover this. Some of them I said, you know what, I've already covered this in another video. So things will come and go, but the point is you wanna have a good basis to see, can I think of 20 different titles that I can do 20 different topics that I can do a video on about this topic. Like if your topic is light fixtures, are there 20 different videos that I can think of that I could do videos on? Can it be, I don't know, wattage of lights, different light coverings, different fixtures, pieces, whatever it may be. You wanna get a master list of what your game plan is gonna be. And then taking it a step further, for each of those titles, you wanna jot out some notes of the topics that you wanna cover within that video. For me, what I do is I had a master list, so I typed out all the titles of the videos I wanted to do, and then I did a separate note in my phone for each, each title. I didn't do this all at the same time, I did this over the span of weeks, but I would write out video number one, I don't know, how to do exam number one, and then write down some notes. Video number two, how to use pass it and write down some notes and i would leave that note there and maybe a couple days later maybe a week later i would say oh you know what this would be good to add in that and i'd go back to that list and add that note there so that when i did find the time to film the video i had a great base baseline of the things i was going to talk about and expand step number three execution oh that sounds bad uh we will call it uh just do it <laughs> So this, what you want to do in this, this step is just actually doing the filming. So you want to um, plan, what do you want to look like that day? What do you want your hair to look like? What clothes do you want to wear? If you want to be casual, awesome. If you want to be business oriented, awesome. If you want to be in your swimming suit by the pool, if that's related to your topic, awesome. You just basically want to plan what your appearance is going to be to your audience. You want to plan what your atmosphere is going to be. I know this background isn't so exciting, but it's what's working for me in my house today in this quiet area. But you want to plan your background. So you can, some people use backdrops, which is a really awesome idea. You can buy a bunch of fabrics and use different colors, or you can buy paper backdrops, whatever works for you. Um, you just want to go ahead, plan those things, it's kind of step number one. But you want to execute, film the video, and film your personality. If you are a smiley person, smile. If you are, if you speak another language, say something in your language. Have your intro being something said in your language. Every intro to your video, say your language, or don't say your language, but say something in your language. Like, you, you get what I mean. So. Let your personality show and just be yourself. Record as much as you want. My videos, when I record them, are typically 
20 to 30 minutes long and then I just edit out all the, the pauses and mistakes and everything. So film everything and that way while you're editing or whoever's editing, you have that option to maybe include bloopers at the end or include some of the funny moments in the video. Step, oh, well step number four, edit. <laughs> so similar to what I was just saying. So you can either do this yourself or you can hire someone to do it. I actually, I was so surprised. A marketing company just reached out to me yesterday saying they see my videos and they see an awesome potential for improved video editing and they would love to edit my videos. They said they'll edit one for me for free and if I choose to use them, then they will continue to edit my video with all these benefits and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. I can get someone to edit for me. And then I go to their website and they show me the pricing and some plans were $2.95 a month, some were up to $800 a month. I'm like, okay, I'm not at that level yet where I can outsource my editing for that monthly price. But if you have the money and you need to save the time, that's an option that is a more expensive option. So you can probably find other people on Fiverr. That's a good place to look or Etsy. Um, that's a good place to look. But in general, either edit yourself, learn to edit or hire someone to do it. I chose to learn myself. I, I don't have any marketing background or anything like that. I just search YouTube tutorials, how to edit an iMovie. So I watched a bunch of videos learning tips and tricks and um, I do those in my videos and you just have to take baby steps. You just learn how to add an intro into the video, learn how to add an outro. Like the basic things you need for a video is really, it's really minimal. Like once you have the content, you just need to shorten it to the length that you're happy with. I would say add an intro or a slide with your name, ch your channel name or slogan and add a little bit of background music and you're good. Anything else is is above and beyond and not needed, but it can help to enhance your message. Step number five is repeat. Repeat, repeat. So basically you're just doing all those, those steps again. You want to plan your videos to your lifestyle and your scheduling. When I first started YouTube, when I first started back in January, February, no, back in January, I had planned to do one video a month. I thought that that was a, that was a comfortable time frame for me, but after doing research, I found that doing one video a month is not gonna help your channel to grow and it's not gonna be good consistency. So I then opted to do one channel a week. And for me, I thought that was pushing it, but because I made it a priority, I worked my schedule so that I knew this was a filming day, this was an editing day, and then I would post on this day. So sometimes I just film one, it, one video, edit one video and post. Sometimes like today, I will film six videos and edit them over multiple days and then schedule when they will be posted. So find out what will work for you and your lifestyle and make sure it's something you can, can, that you can commit to and stay consistent. They say, after the research I've seen, if you really want your channel to grow, they say you should be doing three videos a week. That's a hell of a lot of videos for me, but you know what? It also depends on what kind of videos you're doing because my videos are more informational and helping students with their exams and such, so it's more content and information. But some people who like beauty channels, usually like with time lap, time lapse and things like that, your videos are a couple minutes long. So depending on whatever your niche is and the topics you're covering, you may be able to do shorter videos that are more frequent, or if maybe you need to do one video once a month just to get started, and then you build up from there, there is nothing wrong with that. And that's just YouTube. You can also do a similar progression for Instagram if you want to, like you don't have to be on every social media platform. Like with my YouTube channel, when I'm starting it off for my school, like to help people going through the school, I said, you know what, I can't do everything. I can't do Twitter. I can't be tweeting every five, 10 minutes of the day or reading hundreds of tweets every hour. I can't be on Facebook. Like I'm in a bunch of real estate Facebook groups. I will post some. 
wherever I can. <laughs> um, some good ones to be in that you wanna make sure you join. But just being in those groups and reading all the messages and content in every day is a job in itself. So I'm like, I'm not gonna have time to now make my own Facebook group and upload content to that. When I become a realtor, that's a different story. I will be doing that. But as of my channel right now, I said, well, all I wanna focus on is YouTube and Instagram. So these, this is my formula for YouTube. You can do the same thing and take it over to Instagram. Um, it's gonna be a lot. Actually, you know what? Instagram now has TV, like Instagram TV and things. So you can do longer videos, but Instagram in a whole is gonna be a lot shorter clips. So maybe that's somewhere where you can start off with start off at filming 30 or 60 second clips of whatever topic it is and doing the edit for a 30 second or 60 second video and posting that on Instagram and finding a schedule to be consistent with. And then as you gain an audience, as you gain experience, as you get more comfortable, you can do longer videos on YouTube. Or you can put that in reverse and start on YouTube and then work into Instagram or you can just do them both at the same time like I did. The point is you can't do it all, you can't do everything, so you need to find what works for you. So that's it, those are my five tips. Research, plan, execute, edit, and repeat. <laughs> Okay, I hope that helps out someone. If you guys have any other tips, please comment below and share them with everybody else who's watching these videos. If you enjoyed this video and you appreciate the information I'm sharing, I would appreciate if you went and clicked that like button. And as well as subscribe. Thanks for watching again, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.